I got a poem for you. Bless you. We love you, Pastor. Thank God for Pastor Emeritus Polly Walker. Actions speak louder than words. This is the poem. Actions speak louder than words. Don't be deceived by all those fancy talkers. Because a man can say he'll turn your night to day. A man can say he'll take your sufferings away. A man can say that he'll roll your dark clouds away. But when it comes to doing, and when it comes to showing, it's going to take some knowing. Because a man can say that they'll build a world in a day. Anyone can say they'll make a stormy day bright. Anyone can say they'll put all the wrong things right. But when it comes to doing, it's going to take some showing, and it's going to take some knowing. The moral of this whole story is that our action speak louder than words. It's a dangerous time that we're living in. That we take the words of man as gospel truth. I know you. I, too, have been spoke, talked out of some money for a good product. They know how to put those sentences together. And they can sell you something bootleg. And make you pay the rate, right, the real price for it. I don't have a friend here. What a dangerous time that we live in, church. Where our words and our actions don't match. In Bible study, you all, if y'all have not been tuning in, because I know y'all hadn't been here. But if y'all have not been tuning in and recapping Bible study, y'all have been missing a treat. We have been doing an in-depth study. Of the seven churches of the revelation in God. Jesus is message to them, telling them how good they are in areas in which they need to improve. And I want you to know that they church, you look good. You're serving well. But God can see what we can't see. And He can see areas in which we need to improve. Last week we talked with the church of Sardis. Somebody say Sardis. Sardis was a church that he had problem with them because they were a dead church they were a dead church now let me give y'all the definition of that now they were a loud church they was a hype church they was a rowdy church they made a lot of noise they knew what to do they had all of their the their theatrics together but their hearts did not match with what they were doing in order to see the miraculous hand of God, your heart and your mouth is going to have to align to be on the same thing. You can't be talking one way and believing another way. Because God will put you in a situation to where you have to put your money where your mouth is. And if you say that he's going to put you in a test where you're going to have to live the words that you say. This church is a dead church. They knew what to do, but they didn't have a heart for God. And in the fact of that, they were allowing stuff to go on in the church. Lord, I'm not going to get into Bible study, but I kind of wanted the whole church at large to hear that. Some things is Bible study class and some things are for everybody. Hello, somebody. Jesus rebuked this church and got on this church because they were suffering and entertaining people that was doing the opposite of what God said do. And this church was dead because they didn't allow the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to live in them and to ignite those that are beside them or those that they fellowship with to live according to God's word. Can I tell you, we have still, I know we're under the law of grace and some of us are abusing the devil out of grace thinking just because we have the grace of God, we can do what we want to do. We we can live how we want to live. We can say what we want to say. We can go where we want to go. But you in the devil is a lie because you're going to find out one day that sin is just like a credit card. What happens? You swipe now, you pay later, and when you pay it got some interest on the hell of somebody and you are going to have to deal with your sin. I am going to have to deal with my sin. I'm not talking about the outside sin that y'all see, but it's some sin in your mind that don't nobody, I don't have no help here. You're thinking some thoughts right now. You got some sinful plans. Hello, somebody. You got something up on the calendar that's sin. And God is going to have to deal with you. Have I got a witness here? He 
you was telling the church of Sardis, I need your words and your action to match. He's telling, James is telling in this letter right here, he's saying that having faith is good. But you're going to have to put some action alongside with your faith. See, the fact of the matter is the King James Version is saying, we said, and we quoted that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is a dead faith because the lack of works reveals an unchanged life or a spiritually dead heart. Did I say it too fast or are we all on the slow bus today? Faith without works is dead because the lack of works, the lack of what we do, it reveals an unchanged life in a spiritually dead heart. What are you saying, Sally? You can profess all day long that you saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, but if nothing in your life resembles what happened internally, then you're spiritually dead. And you wonder why somebody had to sing to your sweat. They got to pump you up until they get out of breath. It's because some of them spiritually dead. Let me tell you a story. One day it was a church, a dead church was having church offer. It was dead. Well, in reality, one of the members happened to pass away during the service. They called the funeral home. Say, hey, we got a dead brother that passed away right here because we're still in service. We're not going to stop serving. Y'all just come on. So they have a service. The dead man was dead. The granny, the, the funeral home with the granny, a stretcher, what you all call it, come in and come pick up the dead. And he walked right back out. The pastor got from the pulpit and went to the funeral home man and said, what you doing? I tell you about a dead man today. He said, I don't have enough stretchers. There's a whole bunch of dead folks in there. Can I tell you today, church? Faith without works is dead. You say you love God. Your actions ought to express that you, I don't hear nobody here. Your actions ought to say that you love God. How you going to love God? And you never have a hallelujah. You never have a thank you, Jesus. David didn't say, I will bless the Lord at all time. And his praise shall continually live in my head. Oh, see, this message is for the chosen, frozen. Hello, somebody. That ain't what David said. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Some people act like it's a sin to shout. That's not my personality. This ain't got nothing to do with personality. This has everything to do with power. And God's power is stronger than your ego. God's power is bigger than your preference. God's power. I'm almost done. See, faith without works is dead. We tell you dead faith is shown because the lack of works that reveal the unchanged heart of a spiritual dead person. We can see it in your actions. You can see it in your actions. If the gospel don't constrain you to change, amen, and I know you thought this was going to be a faith message. You have faith, believe it, and receive it. No, this is an action speaking louder than words. You say you belong to God, act like it. You say that you're saved, act like it. You say that you feel with the Holy Ghost, act like it. You say that you love everybody, act like it. You say that you got power, dominion, and authority, act like it. Get your head up. Quit looking ugly. Hello, somebody. I don't care how ugly you are. You need to quit looking ugly. What is ugly? A down spirit. A, 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 that's a... I can't find a word to express that. But y'all know that people, they'll look for reason to be mad. Y'all know those people, they'll find something wrong with everything. Yeah, the fact, we went to that chicken house yesterday. All this seasoning. 
I'm just messing with you, baby. But you got some people like that for real that you can't satisfy them. They ain't never happy. But God is saying, if you say that you're mine, you will find the good and the bad because you know that all things work together for the good and the Lord. I don't have no help. You must say what I say every day, that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I intentionally, on purpose, choose to rejoice and be glad. That's what James is telling the church. But I want to teach a little bit on that. I got a few more minutes, Erica. You say, faith without works is dead. But I don't want you to confuse works and faith with salvation. See, it say, work, faith without works is dead, not salvation. See, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It said, for it was by who? I wish I had a Bible church. Do we know the Bible? It's by who? It's by grace that we say. Through what? Through, I'm going to get my money back on friendship. We need to go back to Congress, Bible drill, 101, 203. It's by grace that we're saved through faith. Not of our own. Hello, somebody. Not of myself, but it is a gift of God and not by works of, so that nobody can boast. Because don't think that you can work your way saved. Don't think that you can sing your way saved. Don't think that you can shout your way saved. The only way that you can mount up to salvation is surrendering your life to Jesus Christ, accepting him as your Lord and Savior, believing that he died, buried, and got up again, and you shall be saved. Profess to be Christian, but their actions, their lifestyle, their priorities indicate otherwise. You are Christian, but nothing around you symbolizes Christ. I don't see Christ in you nowhere. Hello, somebody. I don't have no help here. See, the fact of the matter is, even DNA, DNA, Garcia. Garcia, that's my son. Hello, somebody. That, look at my boy. He said a good prayer. <laughs> but guess what? They may not see no physical resemblance in him. I'm going somewhere. Y'all just stay on the boat with me. Come on now. They may not see no, he taller than me, he taller than all of us. And you can't be too tall and be a salad. Hello, somebody. Brother Brandon, it ain't that funny. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> no physical trace. But in his countenance, in the way he lives and the thing to do, the, the, the manlyhood that he's taking on, y'all don't hear me here. He, he, he feed it somewhere. It's a resemblance. He live in a Sally house. As a matter of fact, he got a shirt to say to Sally play all day. Let me tell you something. He been around Sally. He been fed by Sally. He's been taken care of by Sally. He loves Sally. He respects Sally. And guess what? That boy is a Sally. What are you saying to this church here today? If you say you love Jesus, if he love you, you ought to act like him. You ought to walk like him. It ought to be something about your life uh, that will let me know that you connected uh, to Jesus. Yeah. 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 I got to go on. Y'all looking at me crazy and I don't care. Let me deal with the text a little bit. He started calling the road. Abraham. Father Abraham. I'm one of them and you is too. Let's praise the Lord. He's talking about how Abraham, it showed his action with his faith. Y'all know the story. God had sent an angel of the Lord to tell Abraham to kill his promised son. The son that he longed for, the son that he'd been wanting. The, the legitimate son, the son that was in wedlock. And God told him to kill him. But God discovered, and I'm going to try not to get happy, but I feel a strong dose of happy coming. God discovered 
that Abraham loved him more than he loved the promise. Let me have somebody with your materialistic mind. Some of you worshiping the cars you drive. Some of you worshiping the houses that you live in. But what does it profit a man if he gain everything and lose his own soul? God said about Abraham, now I see and I know that you fear his God because you did not withhold your son. What did he do? He had faith that he obeyed God, but he had actions when he went up to that mountain and he took that knife getting ready to kill his son and what God is trying to tell us some of us to do all he wants you to do is go up on the mountain he ain't gonna make you lose your house he ain't gonna make you lose your joy but he want to know do you love me more than you love it do you love me more than you love her oh y'all don't like this kind of preaching do you love me more than you love him? Sometimes him will make you compromise everything that God had never showed you. You'll compromise your latest status because of him. But there's a capital to him that can make all things new and right for you. I got five minutes. He said, but I know, I know that you fear is God. That's what he said. And he told us right here, go back to James. He go back in here. You see Abraham? Abraham believed God. And it was righteous to him because he let his actions uh, go along with his faith. We talked about Rahab, the harlot, the prostitute, uh, how she was used by God. Uh, and can I tell you that God is looking for somebody uh, that's not going to just talk the talk, uh, but he wants somebody that are talking uh, like you're walking. Hello, somebody. Walking like you're talking. Uh, am I, I wish I had somebody that knew what I was trying to say. Uh, God is raising up a people uh, that's going to walk it like you're talking. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you you're going to start walking so you ain't going to have to say nothing uh, because your light is going to so shine uh, that men are going to see your good works uh, and give God the glory. See, there's three things I want you to know about faith. You got to hear it. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You wonder why your faith tank is low. How much word are you intaking? Tell the truth and shame the devil. How much word can you handle? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In order for your faith to increase and to go into action, first of all, you got to hear it. And then you got to speak it. Call those things that are not as though they were. Third, you have to do it. Look at the neighbor and say, just do it. Y'all is hard-headed in here. Uh, you and I are going to have to put our faith into action. So, yes, we're believing God for greater, uh, but God is expecting greater from us uh, because the last time I checked, uh, nothing from nothing leaves. You got to have something, uh, and all you need is a little bit of faith. Uh, it don't take a whole lot to just use a little you got. And so... I want you to know, and all of you get it. Get an understanding. What do you have to understand? We have to understand that we have a God that if we put our actions in our faith together, He's able. Is there anybody here that knows that God is able? Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly. I wish I had a Bible church in here. Abundantly. Above all. You can ask God, think, and it's caught into the power that work it in you. And all I came to do today is to activate the faith that you have. Is there anybody here want to live in an activated faith? I don't want to have faith that's inactive, but I want to put my faith to action. Let me tell you a true story. One day, I 
put all my money in the bank. Had a debit card to the Sally. I was swiping it everywhere, but I'm irresponsible sometimes. I lost my debit card. I went down to the bank. I say, bank woman, I got about $2,000 in the bank, and I lost my debit card. I need another card right now. She said, hold on. I'm going to have to mail you one. It might take five to seven business days, but when you get the card, you will have access to your money. Sister Beverly, I went to the mailbox every day looking for that ML up. Finally got that card. I've been waiting to spend money all week long. I went down to Walmart, got a basket full of stuff. Singles, hot links. Y'all not gonna hear me here. Had me some Coca Cola. I was getting ready to spend that money that I didn't have access to. It was my I just couldn't get it. Went down to the cashier. I pulled out that brand new debit card. I went to swipe it. They didn't have a chip back then. You had to swipe it. And then it said decline. I said, no, baby. I got $2,000. I said, take some of that receipt paper. Fold it up in that debit card. Blow it and swipe it one more time. The woman did what I told her to do. Swipe that debit card. And it said insufficient fund decline. I said the devil is alive. The woman looked at the card. She said, Marcus, you have not activated this card. And that's why you cannot purchase. And somebody here, you got all the faith in the world, but still sitting down on that book. You're still sitting down on that new business venture. You're still sitting down on your dreams. You're still sitting down on your purpose. I come and tell you, the faith is there. Now all you got to do is get up. I'll get up and watch God work a miracle because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. All faith is. Believing a thing is so, even though it's not so, in order that it may be so. I said it too fast. I said uh, all that faith is uh, is believing that a thing is so, uh, even though it's not so, uh, in order that it may be so. Uh, you may not uh, can see it with your natural eyes, uh, but that's the reason why uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, I may not can see it, uh, but as long uh, as I believe it, uh, Know that God has the power. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? And the reason why I know he'll do it, cause what Friday he died. Is anybody here but know that he died? Died? Put him down in a borrowed tomb. Stay there all night Friday. Stay there all day Saturday. But early, early, I need time to get happy. Early, 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 Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Power to pick you up. I know it. Action speak louder than our words. I don't care what you say, but God wants you to live and come from Missouri to show me state. Say, show me your faith. James, say, show me your works. Show me that you really have faith to believe that God can do it. I know that it seems impossible for you. 
I know that it seems impossible to you. But if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the sycamine tree, to get thee behind me, you can say to Satan, you can say to your stress, you can say to your worries, get away from me. And it has to go. But you got to be challenged to let your action speak louder than your word.